Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Going to talk to you today about slideshows. And I'm sure pretty much everybody out there has seen slideshows on the internet where you go to a website and get a piece of information, image, whatever, and then you click the arrow and it goes to the next, you know, shows you uh, the next slide, the next thing, and you just keep moving through that. So uh, we're talking about creating these for online output, of course and specifically HTML5 output. There are, are a few other formats that you can use, HTML help if you're doing the real old school thing. There's also web help and web help plus. You don't wanna use those, those are going away. So really we're talking about HTML5. Now, some of our uh, Flare project, pr Flare project templates that we have built into Flare are e-learning uh, project templates. They have this as an example. And so I just quickly want to go into one of those projects and show you the topic and the output so you, you're real clear on, on what I'm talking about today. In the e-learning project template, one of them, you can open up the uh, content explorer and down here you see slideshow. There's a topic and it's got a slideshow in it already. This is the part that I'm talking about. And if you look at the output, for that, here it is. This is how this particular slideshow works. You come to this page and you're seeing a little bit of information. In this example, it's just text, um, but you could have all kinds of things in there and click the arrow button, next thing, or you can use these dots down at the bottom to also move through. So that is an example of a slideshow. So what I'm gonna do in this video, in the next section, we're gonna begin and uh, actually create a slideshow. And then we'll go through a lot of the settings. There are different settings that you can have that you can apply to a slideshow depending on what you want, what kind of elements and what kind of behavior you want for your slideshow. Then we're gonna move on to talk about styles because in addition to those settings, you can also get into your style sheet and you can change your uh, slideshows that way. And I'll wrap up with just some things to consider when you are incorporating slideshows into your Flare project. That's what we're after. Let's get started. All right, now creating a slideshow in Flare is pretty simple. Uh, it's just that once you actually create, you add the slideshow into a topic, the way that you kind of get around the thing and the tags that you're seeing it's a little bit unique compared to other things that you see in Flare. Let's go into a Flare project and take a look. So this is that uh, slideshow topic I just showed. I'm actually going to stay in here and I'm just gonna insert another slideshow. This is of course down here is the original one. And I'm just gonna insert another one right here. And all you need to do is come up to insert ribbon and you select slideshow right there and it just plops it in. It's gonna give you some default uh, content and slides in here because a slideshow is, it's a series of slides essentially. And uh, so if, first of all, look at the content here and look at the structure bars that were created over on the left. So you can see it's made up of several pieces here. And, and if you don't have your structure bars on right down here to toggle them on and off, and uh, so you have this main structure bar here. If you hover over it, you can see Madcap Slideshow. That's really the thing that's holding everything in place. And then this is made up of slide tags. And so you hover over the next one in, Madcap Slide. That's that part. And then there's the content within it. And you can see I've got actually an H2 and paragraph tags, and they're not exactly, um, you know, lined up here, but this is what they refer to. That H2 goes to that, this paragraph goes to that, this paragraph tag goes to that. All right, and then there's another. Initially, you're gonna get two slides in here, okay? But you only see one slide at a time. And you can get to the other slides, you can click on the, on the uh, structure bars, or you've got these buttons that are just sort of built into this sort of mini user interface in here. And this button right here, the arrow, will get you to the next slide. And that slide opens. And of course, to get to the previous one, you click that to go back. 
And then you have other buttons in here to delete a slide or to add a new slide. Okay, so that's basically what it consists of. Those, those are the basic, basic tag, tags that you're going to see. Now, uh, let's go ahead and we've got two slides in here. Let's say we wanna add another slide. I'm gonna click on that plus button and it gives me one here. Don't have any text in here yet. Let me just type something so I can see this is, this is where it is, all right? And um, so that's the third slide. And then I could add, well, let's just, let's just go with this for now. So we've got three slides in here and we can add any kind of content that we want just about. Um, some things uh, probably work better in a slideshow than others, but you're, there, there aren't too many you know, limitations in here. And I'm gonna press enter here because I had that, that just one line of text. And notice I didn't see that blue uh, image in there and it sometimes will help to press enter and then it's able to show because I also had that uh, that rem remove slide and that was sort of, they were kind of fighting for space right there. So I'm gonna click that to go back to slide two, slide one. Now let's put some content in here. And in this video, I'm just gonna grab some content from some other topics. Like I'm gonna double click this state capital one and I've got a heading, an H, uh, that's an H2, I believe. Yeah, it's an H2 and a paragraph and a, uh, an image. I'm gonna copy that and I'm just going to paste it right over the top of that. Now, this has, that's an H2, but you don't have to have a heading in here at all, not at all. Um, you don't have to have text in here. You don't have to have an, you can have all kinds of things. You can have you know, text, images, videos, tables, lots of things that, that Flare allows you to add, but I'm just going to add these things for now, and I'm gonna open up this topic, same kind of content, heading, text, and an image. And I'm gonna to go to slide two, and I'm gonna paste that in here. All right, I'm gonna make sure I don't have any space at the bottom of these either. Here's that one. Yeah, I got an empty paragraph down here. I don't really want that. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna go to the third slide, the one that I just created, and I'm gonna copy this content in here. All right, let's close a couple of these, get back here. I've got those two paragraphs, let's paste that, nothing down below, good. All right, so that was pretty easy to add uh, content within here. Now, another thing that you might want to insert into a slideshow, maybe in a video. So I'm gonna add, create a brand new slide here. And now I'm on slide four. And uh, I have a YouTube video for uh, Austin that I just kind of grabbed off of YouTube. And all I'm gonna do in here is go to the insert ribbon, select multimedia, YouTube, Vimeo, brings up this. There, I've already, already pasted in there. And I'm just gonna keep default settings on this thing. Click okay. And now I've got a video on the last slide. All right. Okay, so I was just making sure I don't have any extra space around it because I don't like the way that looks if I do. So slide one, two, three, four, but maybe I want this slide to be uh, at the top, instead of slide four, I want it to be slide one. Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. One is to get into the slideshow settings, which I'm gonna show you in a bit, but you can also use these structure bars. So that's slide four, that's slide three right there. I can just click on slide four and drag it up to the top and release it. So now that's slide one and that's slide two, state capital and on and on. All right, so adding the content was pretty easy, but uh, we're not nearly done yet. We wanna add some settings, but before we do that, let's, let's preview this thing. Now, you can gen generate the output to look and see how it works, or you can preview, and preview is just this little button right here. Sometimes I like to generate the output 
when I'm trying something out because you get everything coming together, you get the template page and everything. So you get the full picture of, of what you're actually getting. But a lot of times you can get all of that um, pretty well just by previewing it and it's quicker. So I'm just gonna click my preview. It actually came up on this monitor. Open this up here. All right. And let's just kind of move this so we see more of it. Gosh. All right, well, scroll down. So this is that topic. There's a slideshow, there it is. And you can see there's the other one down below it. Okay, so we kind of have the same thing in here. And if I move it out, you can see it's actually getting bigger and that video's pretty big. And if I had a bigger monitor, it's, it would probably increase in size there too. Now I've got my, I got these arrows that are automatically included in here. And I've got these bullets down here to navigate to. And I could just quickly move through this and see this thing. And that's my slideshow. All right. So there are some things that we probably want to do to it. We just quickly added the content. In the next section, let's go into the settings and see what are all some of the different things that we can change to maybe you know improve this some. All right, so a couple of ways that you can sort of edit, manipulate your slideshow to change it up. One is changing some settings on that slideshow. And uh, another is getting into your style sheet. We're gonna look at settings first. So uh, to get to your settings, the best way to do that probably is to go to that main slideshow structure bar, right click and select edit slideshow. And this will bring up this dialogue with a whole bunch of stuff on it. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look here. I'm actually going, I wanna start over here on the size, uh, cause that's the first thing that I saw that I thought, eh, I, I might wanna, I wanna switch this up a bit. It can be kind of wide in there. Maybe I wanna control that. I want it to be maybe a little bit narrower and that'll help reduce the size of that video cause that video can get pretty big. So I'm going to set the width on this. Let's set it to 700 pixels. All right. And right now it just has responsive size selected, not adaptive height. Let's go with that. I'm going to save it and preview it and see what that did. Okay. It's coming up here. Yeah. So that changed the size on that. So it is narrower. So if I go out bigger like that, it's not getting, you know, it's not, this thing isn't growing because it's set at a width of 700. But it did have that responsive uh, setting in it. So notice what's happening as I go in, the size of that video is changing, the content is changing. And if I go to one of these inside here, the same kind of thing will happen. So I, move in like that. I always forget on these videos, it doesn't always capture my dragging motion. So I have to stop, but you can see as I'm moving this, how it is responsive. Okay. So what about that other thing, uh, that, that adaptive height, that was another setting in there. Well, notice that these uh, Frank, these slides are all the same size. And you can kind of expect that from these final three, because they sort of have the same kind of content in them, but the video doesn't. So you get this, you got this extra space because what's happening is it's looking at your biggest one, your, your tallest one, which is really this one right here. And I do have some, there's some margin or padding going on here that is giving that space above and below, but it's keeping that that uh, structure, that that slide, that rectangle, it's the same size on all of these. So it's very uniform and that can be really nice, but maybe you've got some content in here that's different heights like that. And you're thinking, boy, I don't want all that space down there. So let's go back into our settings. There it is. And let's select adaptive height, okay. And let's try this again. 
And now it should just kind of adjust. So I don't have all that space down at the bottom and it just adapts nicely to that. Now, if I go to the next one, you can see the thing grew because there's more content. It's, there's more height in here and it grew even more there. So, and it's kind of be easier to see if I had a, a higher resolution, but I'm filming at a lower resolution because of the video. All right, but you can you get the idea. It's adaptive. The height is adaptive in here. All right, now what happens? Let's go back in here and let's take out the responsive size. And so now I like to have the responsive size on, of course, um, because it's just more modern. It adapts and you are going to lose your content as the wide content as you go off, you know, if you, as you as you go narrower. And that's why I like to have the responsive setting on, but you might want it to not be responsive because you want to keep an exact size on this. So close out of that. Let's go back into our settings. I'm gonna put responsive back on. I kind of like that better. Another thing that you saw in there when we when we um we're looking at the video slide, the very first video slide on a, on a couple of these examples, it wasn't exactly centered. And we're gonna, as we go on here, we're gonna get into the styles section next and we're gonna maybe manipulate that there. But we're gonna keep these settings here. Now, the navigation, what was the navigation? Well, it was showing bullets in here, but it also had these arrow overlays. So if I turned arrow overlays off, and I preview this thing again. Before I was really relying on those arrows off to the right and left, I can still navigate using these if I want, right? But uh, you don't get the arrows if you turn that off. So maybe we like the arrows and keep those on. And we have bullets. So it's by default is showing bullets at the bottom. You could uh, select none and it won't have anything down there. And you could just have arrows. Or the other thing that you could do is you could select thumbnails and then you select thumbnail images for each one of these. Now, each one of these slides is in here in this grid. And so you can control certain things like before I showed you how to change the order by dragging the structure bars. Well, you could do the same thing here. You could select on a row, the third one. And if you wanted to move it up in the order, you could do that. You could get rid of it. Uh, that one is going to get you a new thing, right? So you can control these slide by slide in here. Well, one of the things, a couple of the things that you can control are captions and thumbnails. So if I wanted, the thumb, wanted to use thumbnails, for each of these as navigation at the bottom, I could uh, select each one and click this button and it brings up the dialogue. And now I can go select a, an image and I'm just gonna select one that's in my project. For that video, I actually, before I did this, uh, started recording, I created a little image for that Austin video. And I'm gonna select that and click okay. And then I'm gonna go into these others and I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna get the Capitol building and I'm gonna do Zilker Park. Come on, there it is. And finally, Lady Bird Lake. All right, so I'm selecting these things in here. Now those are just gonna be shown as, as thumbnails, little, little images automatically, even though the actual images are bigger. So I can preview this and you're going to see now at the bottom of the slideshow, instead you see these thumbnails that let you go from one to the other, all right? And that's kind of nice. The reason why thumbnails are nice is if you've got content where it doesn't really matter the order, the, you know, if you don't want people to go in exact order, then you could put these down, the thumbnails in there and people could just skip ahead and it's easy to know what they're clicking on. Whereas the bullets are maybe better if they need to go from one to the other. But that is how you get thumbnails in here. All right, so what else besides uh, thumbnails? Let's go back 
into our settings and down here. So we got caption, right? So you can add a caption and let's, my, I'm just gonna type my video caption and it could be, of course, longer than that. That's a very short one. And if you've got uh, variables that you wanna use, you can click that and insert variables into there. So that's that one. And then I'll just put uh, state capital building, All right? And I don't know if that was supposed to be capitalized or not. And Zilker Park, right? I'm not very consistent here. Got some periods and some that don't have. I'm just wanting, I just want to get text in here. So I'm not thinking about this too much. I'm just want to show you captions. So I got captions in there. Well, that's not enough because you also need to select this checkbox right here. And then that will show your captions. All I did was enter them first. And then I enabled them by clicking that checkbox. And you click this come down here. So that's what a caption looks like initially, initially, right? And there you go. So captions, you can do that. Let's go back into the settings. And so we already talked about the arrows. You can also choose to start on a random slide. Maybe you always want them to begin on the same one. Like in this one, I have a video that seems, you know, like a logical place to start. And then you got Con other content within that, but maybe you just want them to display randomly. You know, each time it's opened, it who knows what is going to be the first one. You can also choose to display multiple slides at the same time. So I've got four slides in here. Maybe I want two of them shown side by side at the same time. I could choose two. I'm just going just gonna to keep it on that. All right, so that is that tab, the general tab. Then you go to the playback tab. These are all pretty self-explanatory. Do you want the thing to loop uh, once you get to the end as people are navigating uh, from beginning to end? Do you want them to be able to click and loop back to start the next one? Do you want this thing to start automatically and you know, a delay of min milliseconds to put on there? Uh, you can include a play pause button direction does it go does it move to the next one or does it move to the previous one how do you what do you want it to do do you want it to go move horizontally vertically do you want it to fade you can have a fade transition um, and then if you have a transition what's the speed milliseconds um, in there so uh, those are all pretty pretty easy easy to understand in here so let's say, that and let's just choose something in here. Let's have this start automatically and let's just give it a delay of 200 milliseconds in here. Let's put a play pause button and uh, let's do keep that. Let's do a fade. All right. And let's see what we got. So let's preview it. And this is what I would do I would just try out these different settings and see what happens here. So I didn't click anything. It just, after a certain delay, it just started moving through these. And you can see it's got a little bit of a fade as it's transitioning. And that time is um, just as it was set in there. So that's what those settings will do. Okay. So that is pretty much gonna do it for editing the settings. Now let's move in to look at how the styles can help us. Now let's go back into that Flare project. I wanna take another look at our output and see what maybe we want to adjust beyond what we already did. And some, some things that style sheets are gonna let us do. All right, I'm gonna preview this real quickly in here and see what we've got. Okay, and before I forget that play, uh, pause button, I forgot to show you in the last section, it's right here, right? So if I click that pause button, play, right? And go back and forth. So I'm gonna make a couple of change in the settings dialog. One is I'm gonna take off this auto play thing. So it starts automatically. I am also gonna take off the uh, that uh, sizing. So the adaptive height, 
so that it is all the same. And then let's come back into this. All right, so let's go into slideshow, edit slideshow. So we're still looking at the settings in here. Take off that adaptive height and on playback, I don't want it to start automatically, don't need that. Okay, we're gonna loop it. I think we're good. Now let's take another look at this thing. So with styles, <clears throat> you saw that there are different tags that are involved. And so you're able to control the look and feel at different levels. There's that main slideshow tag, and then each slide has its own unique tag in here. And so I could apply something to the whole thing or to just one particular slide, or uh, there's also captions and there's also thumbnail styles in here. Now I took out that adaptive height and noticed that this uh, rectangle now is the same. Everything is the same height, but I'm getting this extra space now. So maybe I want to get the uh, video down a little bit. May I could put a margin on top of it that could help with that. The other thing is just to show you that uh, you might maybe put uh, something on the main slide, slideshow uh, style, maybe a background color. In fact, we could keep the back, or we could keep the background color white. Right now it's transparent, right? So it looks like it's white right here, but actually the topic background is, is white. And so, or it's transparent. It's, at some point, it's, it's, it's getting white from somewhere, right? So I could actually go into my style sheet and change a couple of things. So my favorite little trick here is to right click on style that I wanna change, the, um, the structure bar, come down, style class, edit style class. It's gonna open up my style sheet for me. And I'm gonna work in advanced view because you can just do a lot more in this thing. So first of all, let's look at the background color. So let's say that on topics, I just want a background color. Right now, uh, it doesn't have one. And I'm on the body style. That is the main style that, could, that can control the look for all of your topics. And right now I have this on set properties. I have some media queries open too. I'm gonna close those. I just wanna work in the default one right now. And let's go and find, uh, I can actually put this on all properties. And I am in alphabetical view. I could click this to switch to group view. And this is pretty easy to find. I want the background and I want the background color. And let's just change that to like a sort of a light yellow. There we go. All right, so if I look back at the topics in here, you're gonna see, they're all light yellow. And if you preview, you're gonna see that that background for the slideshow is actually transparent. The yellow is coming through, all right? So if you wanna set a specific, if you want it, definitely want it different from your topic background, you would set uh, a specific uh, color on it. So let's do that. So the style that we're interested in, again, the main one, Madcap Slideshow because that's gonna get it on all my slides. So in here, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm, I'm viewing all styles in here. And that's why I'm able to find this because if I had it filtered for something else, I might not, it might not be showing. So Madcap Slideshow. And let's do background color on that. Should we do white or should we do something fancy like a blue? Looks, yeah, let's make it look like a baby shower. That'll be attractive. Okay, so you can see what it did there. And in the preview, it gives you a better idea of what it looks like. So that is the background. That's how style is affecting this whole thing. All right, now let's say that I don't really like this thing up here so high when the others are, you know, it, there's a little more balance to those other slides. So I wanna get some space up above 
this uh, video. All right. Well, one of the things I like to do, I'm clicking to the left of the video in here, and I've got my P tag an object. One thing that I like to do a lot of times is add divs, div tags. They're just containers um, because who knows who knows what else, where else I'll, I'll want to, I might have other videos and slideshows that I want to use. And I could, um, I could set it on that, put them all in div tags, or I could, or I could create a class of this object tag, which is the actual video. I could do it either way, right? Uh, there's, there's all kinds of ways that you can accomplish things in Flare and in CSS. I'm just going to add a div tag in here because it's what I like to do. And I'm gonna click that button and it's gonna add a div tag right there. So now I've got my object tag and my P tag, which is outside of that. And there's my div tag. All right, now I'm gonna do even more than that because div is, that's just a generic tag and maybe I, I want this to be unique. So I'm actually going to add a class. And if you haven't, aren't familiar with this, you might wanna watch the series, the video series on styles and particularly selectors. So you can understand what I'm doing here by creating a class. So I've got my main div uh, style here. I'm gonna click add selector and let's give this thing a name, maybe like um, video uh, slideshow. So it's unique. So maybe all the videos that I have in slideshows, I want them to have this particular look. And so it adds it there. Now, what do we want to change in this thing? Well, we I'm, I'm thinking about there's again, there's lots of ways that you could try to do this. I just want to add a margin uh, to the top. And let's go in here. It's under box. If you're working in group view, margin top. All right. And let's do, let's try, I could put uh, an absolute value of pixels or something, but let's try a percentage. Let's try a relative unit you know, of me measurement, 25%. And sometimes you just, you try things and you look at them and then you adjust them. So let's just see how this works. So go back to here. Now, right now it's just using that main div. So I need to tell it to use that special one. So I clicked on that and here in the home <clears throat> ribbon, I'm going to select this drop down and there is div video slideshow. All right, doesn't look like it did much there, but let's look uh, at the preview and see really what's going on. And it did move it. Okay, there's space above it. So maybe we just need to adjust the spacing. So I would just kind of go back in here and maybe we could try 20%. Maybe that would work, All right? And come back, that should bring it up some. And I'm just, again, I'm just showing you one possible way to do that. Well, that's better, that's not bad, right? Like, right like that, okay? Uh, so maybe you just wanna go with that. And then if, you want to design for the screen getting smaller. You want to use media queries in. You can watch my uh, video that I did on styles on media queries. And in this particular project, which is a uh, e-learning project, which is skinless, um, you might need to create some custom media queries instead of using the tablet and mobile ones since it doesn't have a skin in there to relate to. So. That's just a, a couple of simple examples of how you can change things in the style sheet. Oh, one more thing. Go back into the style sheet. Let's go back down to the Madcap slideshow area. So there is slides. So this will control individual slides. This will control the whole thing. But you can also control bullets. So maybe you want a different bullet in there or you want to change their look somehow. The captions, you could change that. Maybe we want to put more space between the caption and, uh, and, the, uh, and the content above it. There's different things that you can do. But yeah, there's, uh, you, just, you just kind of figure out what you want to do. Figure out the end result, what you're going for, and then use a combination of your settings and your styles to make it happen. 
So it seems like with almost any kind of feature, there's always certain things that you just kind of want to be aware of and look out for. And that's definitely true with slideshows. So let's go back into Flare. And I'm going to take you through a few things that if I were trying to integrate these into my Flare projects some things that I would definitely want to be aware of. First thing that I want to point out to you is that you might need to use conditions and snippets on slideshows to keep them out of some outputs and, and include them in other outputs. And so the project that I've been showing you is the uh, one of the e-learning projects. It's the basic e-learning project that's just set up on for online only. And you can see this is the way it, or <laughs> it looks this way now because of the styles that I applied to it. But uh, it doesn't have any conditions. It's not using any snippets. If I were to open up the other uh, e-learning project, the project that I created here based on that, uh, that template, you're going to see that that same uh, topic looks a little bit different. You've got this color in here, which these are conditions, and you can see you're not, you're not seeing things exactly as they were before. It's because I've got some snippets in here, which you can see from these brackets. So the files are actually elsewhere, and then you scroll down, and there's actually more content. It's the repeated content that's in the slideshow down here with different conditions on them. So the conditions allow me to flag things to be included in certain outputs, but not others. And the reason why I did this in this project is because this is set up for both online and PDF. Well, slideshows aren't supported in PDF output, but in this case, I'm thinking, well, I still want the content to be in the, uh, I, I still want the content to be in the PDF. I just don't want it to be shown in a slideshow. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you create snippets from, for, from the guts of whatever is in your slideshow. So each one of these uh, slides in here has is a snippet and I can right click it, select open snippet file, and it is, okay, in Explorer, it's there in here. I created it under the snippets folder, famous people, and then just the names of these people. And you can see it's just real simple, H2 and a paragraph tag. And then, uh, so the snippets were inserted into the slideshow, and they were also inserted independently down below. So this, the slideshow, the main slideshow tag, I put an online only condition tag on it. And the areas below, each one of those has a print only condition tag on it. So those are just the names that I have for the conditions in this particular project. They could be named anything. They don't mean anything either until you get to your target and tell what you want these to do. But see, I've got one online only, print only. The idea is online only. That content should only show up in my HTML5 output, my online output, and print only should only show up in my PDF output. And then when I go into my targets, I, uh, I go into the conditional text tab and I tell Flare what to do. So this is, I'm opening up my target for my online output and I tell it online, include, print only, exclude. All right, but what I also want to tell you about this, particular feature is that, uh, or the, the, this particular method of single sourcing is to be careful when you're creating your um, snippets from co for content in your slideshow, if you've already got it in there. I'm gonna go back to the other project <clears throat> that I had open and let's go back to the slideshow topic because I don't have the snippets in here yet. And I do have a snippets folder, but let's say that I want to create, um, let's go to one of these that has um, the content, the text and the image. And so I want, for example, one snippet to be this, the, my heading there, my text and my image. And I can select that and choose create snippet and so this is, let's just name this capital. All right, and it's gonna put it in that snippets folder. It's gonna replace the content that I selected. Boom, did it. Now, if I open this up, 
and select open snippet file, you're going to see it was done correctly. H2, P, P and image in there. That's exactly what I want. So I can insert that same snippet elsewhere. But uh, one of the things that you got to be careful of is when you're going in and selecting content to be come part of the snippet, you don't want to actually, um, you maybe want to be careful of your structure bars over here and trying to use those. Because if I were to select slide three, you don't want the slide three, you don't want that to be your snippet in there. Uh, so let's create one there. I used my structure bar and let's call this capital two. Oops. Okay. All right. Looks okay. Looks all right, but let's open it up. And it actually, what it did, because I wasn't quite careful enough, it created a snippet of my entire slideshow. You can see the first slide, the, the video in here, it's got everything in there. That is not what you want. So you're kind of getting a slideshow within a slideshow and it's gonna be all crazy. All right, that is one thing. Now, uh, let's uh, undo this actually. And undo the first one to get rid of the snippets in there. All right, another thing I wanna bring up is what I call caption creep. So we included captions in this at a certain point, and they're down here, and that looks fine. I've got enough space here, and it's got a, that kind of nice background. It sticks out. What I want to caution you about is to not have too much content in your caption, uh, because what happens is if you end up getting, you know, if you wanted to provide a really intense, you know, in-depth uh, description of what you're looking at. Well, if you get too much content in here, the caption can creep up into the space of the, con of the content above it. And then that's just gonna cause problems for you. So just watch it, just, uh, it's not like you, you're limited just a few words in your caption. You can do more than that, but just be careful when you're doing that. I would also tell you to avoid extra tall content um, so in this, the only thing that's the, these captions or these, these slides in here are taller than my video one. Um, but otherwise they're, they're not too far apart, but if you had a slide that had a really tall piece of content, that might look kind of weird in your output. Um, <laughs> if you're using the adaptive height, it's going to really change when you go from slide to slide, or if you're use, not using it then you're going to have tons of space uh, around some of your other slides. So maybe just be real, you know, conscious of what kinds of content you're putting in here and how it's going to affect the size on other slides. Also, if you add tables into these, uh, let's go down to, let's actually go back to Flare. And let's say that I wanted a table in one of these. I'm just going to use this slideshow now because it's a little bit, there's less going on. So I added a new slide in here, slide two, and I want to add a table in here, which you can, of course, do. Uh, two columns, three rows, that's fine. And notice this, auto fit to window 100%. That's what I would recommend because that's going to make the table responsive. Now let's go grab some text. Uh, to put in some of these cells in here, just so that we've got something to show for this. I put that in there and let's do this content right here. Go into that one. At the very end, I'm gonna press my arrow key and get that into the second frame. Now I'm just gonna do some copy and paste in here just to get the content in. All right, and the table is at 100%. And if I preview this, go down to that slide show, there's my table. Now, as I reduce the size of this, notice that the table's responsive, yeah, which is nice. And that's probably what you want. But 
if I went in, let's go, let's find our table properties in here. Right click on my table uh, structure bar, table properties. And let's say I want to, uh, I want th to make this, uh, let's say 500 pixels. I'm not doing a relative unit of measurement. I'm doing an absolute. Say, I want this thing to be 500 pixels wide. And it goes, okay, I will. And when your screen is at certain sizes, that might be okay. That's okay. Got some space there on the right though. And as I shrink this down, it gets below that 500 pixel mark. It's cutting things off here, right? So you don't want that. So just as a best practice, if you are gonna put tables inside your slideshows, make them 100% to make them responsive. Another thing that I would just tell you is to keep, just in general, keep mobile uh, in mind, tablet and mobile, in addition to your big screen, because you don't know how people are looking at your slideshow. And if it, it might look great on a large screen, it might look goofy on a smaller screen. And finally, the, uh, the last thing is I just now put a table inside a slideshow. That's fine. But don't you don't do the other thing. Don't have a table and then try to put a slideshow within your table or dynamic uh, HTML like drop downs. If you have drop downs and you try to put a slideshow in there, that's not going to work. So there are a few limitations to slideshows, but otherwise they're really great and uh, can be really useful for you. And there you go. Slideshows. It's just another way to display output. Now, I wouldn't necessarily just create slideshows to create slideshows, just like any other feature, uh, but it might be the best option for you. Maybe you just want to keep people in that space and see, you know, easily navigate through different pieces of content. And that could be really, really great for you. So, now you've seen how you can create them and the different ways you can ed edit them through settings and styles. I would go in and play with the settings until you get just what you want. It, it might be a combination of settings and styles and always keep those other things in mind. If you do, it's gonna make things easier for you in the end. That is it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.